Hello, and welcome to your tide omatic So the purpose of this activity is to teach you very briefly about the tides. So what we have here first is the sun, and then because of the sun, these little yellow bulges right there represent tides, or the waters being pulled towards the sun. So what ends up happening is first, we're going to add this little piece of transparency paper. Now, don't make fun of my circles. I'm not very good at cutting circles, but... This little black dot here represents the moon. Now, what we can see around here is another oval. That oval, as you can see, it is a little bit stronger here because it's in line with the moon, and it's a little diminished on either side here, and that's because there's not a moon there. So what we're gonna see is that because of the sun and the moon, we have tides. We have high tides, low tides, super high tides, and super low tides. Now, the other missing element to this diagram will be the Earth, which is hanging out over here. We'll talk about that in a moment. So the lab activity itself is having you walk through a couple processes. Now, the first thing first is that you know the sun is stationary. We can actually rotate this to represent the course of an entire year, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, we're just looking very simplistically at, dis at discovering and learning about the differences between highs and low tides. So now let's first examine the graphics on the transparency, which is this little plastic paper here. What do you notice? Where are the lunar tides bulging and where are they located? As you can see, they're opposite that of the location of the moon. When you revolve the moon around the Earth, so let's add our little Earth. What I did here is I added a very like a red meridian showing you know, approximately Los Angeles area. So what it says here is if we rotate this little plastic piece here, you know, I'm going to leave the Earth stationary just for the purpose of this activity. If I rotate this one quarter turn, so I move my moon, so the moon's now over here, it's been a quarter turn, what has happened? Well, we can see at first that these really large, you know, the moon high tides themselves are pulled on either side. The sun is still pulling some water, but not as much. So we have high tides and low tides. Well, let's move the moon one more time, a quarter turn. Look what happens. We have super high tides on either side here and super low tides. Move here, same setup. We have high tide, low tide, and then we move back over here where things are in line. So as you obviously can tell, when the moon and the sun are opposite here, or next to, pardon, or opposite, that's when we experience our super high versus our, you know, super low tides, uh, respectively. So the lab activity itself is having you just draw conclusions based off of this diagram. We're not looking at this throughout the course of a year. We're just looking at the course of a day uh, and dealing with the moon itself. So again, I'm going to rotate this little plastic piece so you can see the course of what ends up happening with these tides. All right, so now what we've done is we've just rotated the moon around the sun, gone one revolution all the way around. Now, by using deductive reasoning and looking at how these little bulges are operating in relationship with either, you know, you by moving the plastic piece or what about by moving the Earth itself? When you think about the revolution and rotation of Earth in relationship to sun, I think between what I've just done as a drawing that should be enough for you to be able to answer the questions in your lab. That being said, good luck, and we'll talk soon.